Secretary of Nenda Council. Uh, as we all of we are teacher here, English teacher, I am also an English teacher of a private school, Arthi Paradise English School. I have been teaching there since 2016. Uh, today we have a short and sweet program and before going to our session, uh, although it is not a special formal program, um, we are going to make formal somehow. And first of all, I like to be the chair of today's program, uh, Mr. Buddha Kumire, chair of Nenta Lamzu. And I would like to uh, uh, welcome you, yes, on behalf of Nalta Gandhi uh, as an executive member. Uh, this is obviously a very wonderful platform uh, to us because Nalta is a uh, uh, yes, non-political organization. This is truly a professional organization and it offers uh, various opportunities to its members. Basically, this is also a part of uh, uh, let's say program or let's say Nalta. And it organizes different conferences, workshops, trainings, and then different seminars. Basically, it uh, offers an opportunity to its members for the national and international exposure. And Lamjing is also very lucky in the sense because uh, it's led by uh, Mr. Vinod Neopane and now uh, Uddhav sir in the leading position. Vinod sir, so you can uh, so uh, turn his diary. So uh, recently he visited Chicago, and then so this is all yes in relation with, in association with NALTA, British Council, American Embassy and many other uh, uh, helping hands or the association. Therefore, I especially request you to grab this kind of opportunity and please you accelerate your, your uh, uh, let's say, academic uh, activities. Basically, your writing, research, publication and then, uh, yes, and then presentation in the different contexts and then forums. Because these are the main focus of the NALTA organization. Because uh, this is the most active organization in context of Nepal. So when we talk about the different subjects like mathematics and then uh, social sciences and other various genre and then disciplines. Therefore, uh, Lamjing is also very vibrant and then uh, you have the access program currently, yes. And 40 students, they are enrolled from different schools and they are also benefited. And uh, basically earlier, so we also completed the uh, access program in Tanahu. So before Lamjung, so it was in, in Tanahu as well. Uh, therefore, it provides various opportunities for the teacher professional development. So how we accelerate yourself, yes, and how you, uh, let's say, contribute through the NADA, it depends on you. Because uh, only, uh, uh, let's say, in uh, let's say in captivating yourself yes in the classroom context is not enough therefore sometimes you come out from the classroom so what i always say uh, in our teaching profession classroom teaching is just 33 percent research that is 33 percent next 33 percent and the community service so that you deliver outside is 33 percent so that makes 100 percent therefore better not to delimit ourselves in the classroom context so please you also uh, accelerate yourself in the different uh, contexts and similarly you uh, assist uh, NELTA brands and then uh, province and then center from your level and obviously you will be recognized and then you also can grab some opportunities, wonderful opportunities and previous last year our uh, advisor uh, Dr. Neopane, he uh, presented his paper yes, at the Seoul conference, before that I, I I went to UK for the ITF conference and previously our uh, chair, uh, Kamal sir, so he also presented a paper in the UK. So accordingly, so you can uplift your professional endeavor. So therefore, I uh, 
uh, we all the best for this uh, wonderful platform. So exploratory action research. So obviously it uh, merges two different discipline of the research that is exploratory, exploratory research and action research. And we have two veterans facilitators. So the chair and then advisor of NALDA. So they will facilitate today's session. I hope so you will uh, get the insights from them and then you will implement yes the ideas in your context. I wish you all the best and I wish a grand success of this program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Person of this program and the chair of the Altai Bamzu, the person, and uh, respected advisor to America, Dr. General Secretary of Argenta Gandhi, uh, Secretary of Membership Secretary Dev Sir, and other executives of Nenta Gandhi, Ajay sir, Basanta sir, Ambika Sankar sir, Sunil sir, and all the executive members of the Nenta Gandhi, life members of the Nenta Gandhi, and would be life member of Nenta Gandhi. Okay. So I would like to, first of all, I would like to welcome you all to today's program, especially workshop on exploratory action research. And so Basanta Sar has summarized all and everything about uh, what Nelta does and what happens if we join Nelta. So Nelta is totally professional, non-political, non-profit making, professional organization. So, if you face political problem, NELTA will not be there to support you. And if you face professional problems and teaching related problem, and if you need any help for your classroom purpose, NELTA will be with you. NELTA is a forum to be. So, you know, sir, has already informed me that uh, most of you are non-life member of NELTA. So please, I request you to join NELTA to take life membership of NELTA very soon. Because there are lots of opportunities in NELTA. And opportunities won't come to you. If you become active and look for opportunities, you get them. Okay. If you work hard, if you try your best to do something, <coughs> then you will get something here. So Basanta Sir has already told. So many of us have <coughs> visited foreign countries to attend trainings or to present our papers. So this is because of Nelta. Vinod Sir has just visited the US and came back with just before the week. So this is because of Nelta. He joined Nelta. He worked hard for Nelta. Okay. He did a lot in London. So his efforts are recognized. And he was sent to attend training and deliver session in the US. And Nelta Gondaki uh, publishes a journal once a year. This is Istra Journal. So, we encourage you to write articles, research articles, and send them to Nelta Gandhi and this is peer-reviewed journal, and hope your article will be selected, and if not, then we can look for other places to publish. We are here to support you. So, and this program is organized thinking this. 
So you will write at least one excellent research article. You will do excellent research and write article and send to us. And Delta Gandhi is also going to conduct one intensive academic writing research very soon. We decided it in our meeting yesterday. And please, if you are interested, contact Binod sir and he will support you and the training will be two or, uh, for two or three days in Pokhara and after this we hope that the trainees who attend this intensive academic writing workshop will be able to do research and publish at least one article in a year. So please do for this. So contact him and we will give you forum to publish your article. Okay. So we are always with you to help you professionally. And if you hear any training programs or other ELT related programs in Longjong or in Gandaki province, please don't leave it. Try to join it, try to attend it, and we all will work together for the betterment of <coughs> the situation in our province and for our professionalism. And uh, we will be talking a lot in a uh, workshop. So for now, uh, before I leave, so I request you to give big hands to Bino sir, who has just come back from the USA and Basanda sir, from now he is a doctor Basanda sir, so from Melta, he has just completed his PSC. Please let's give them the hands. And we will be talking a lot in the sessions, and for now I will like to hear. Thank you very much. executive members of Nelta Longjum, life members and all the participants. We have been very happy today as we have got very great veterans, dignitaries from Nelta Gondaki. Uh, actually it is my first attempt to conduct a workshop today. Uh, last month there was AGM and the AGM gave me, made me a chair, then after we were not able to conduct any programs yet in Longzhu. And there was a mobile, Gondaki Delta mobile meeting, and it was our turn, and we decided to conduct it yesterday. And as Ranjita said earlier, why not to grab this opportunity as great personalities, dignitaries were here yesterday, and we, I also, as a district chair, member of Delta Gondaki also, I participated there. It was my first uh, province level meeting, and I got lots of experiences, knowledge uh, yesterday. It was so fruitful. And today we decided to conduct a workshop, and I'm very happy we request you, we requested you to, we invited you. Yes? And, uh, from different schools, I have seen you from very far we are here and I hope today's program will be fruitful. The thing what we learned here today will be applied to class of teachers. And especially the why excellent results. Uh, many of our colleagues or teachers demanded the excellent teachers as it has been mandatory in the classroom teaching, especially in the community schools and private schools also is necessary and I hope the things what we learn today will be applied in the days to come and we don't want to make it lengthy uh, so uh, I would like to end this 
formal, somehow formal program and we will go to uh, uh, training session and it will be fruitful. Thank you very much. For Advisor and the guardian, I, I should say, the guardians of Nental Lamjung, our brother, Dr. Navaraj Devanikar, General Secretary Mukesh Sir, Member Secretary Dev Sir, CEOs from different districts, <coughs> executives from Lamjung and Nental, life member, journal member, and all the English language teachers from Lamjung. Uh, so, yes, friends already informed me that I got one opportunity. Actually, yes, I, I, I must say this is a great opportunity for the teachers like us who are out of valley and who are actually we say in ground level. Because the government, many uh, you know, scholarships and many sponsors achieved by the government of Nepal, Ministry of Education, but the teachers who are scattered in district level, you know, like remote district, really get the opportunity. And because of yes, formal services, collaboration with Melta, access programs, and the direct access of US Embassy Railroad program, two teachers from Nepal selected for teacher actions program to go to United States. One me from London and another Gulaki uh, teacher from Udaipur is an access teacher and secondary level language, uh, secondary level teachers in Udaipur district. I went to Chicago and Gulaki went to Detroit, a uh, uh, city of Michigan. We went at the same day, returned back same same day, but different planes, different cities with a different group of teachers. And that group was com com comprised of uh, 13, te 13 teachers from 13 different countries, including the United States. So it was actually exchange sharing, you know, experience sharing, sharing best teaching practices and cultures, and learn something from American uh, schools, American universities, and American research centers. So mostly, my visit was focused to research, university as well as school visit and experience here. So uh, I'm very glad to, to share some of my experiences because it takes a time, but I'm just highlighting some of the educational aspects, uh, research-oriented things. It is better to share to the English language teachers. Uh, the topic was, the, the theme of the program was that one, modern social and emotional learning, ESEL, instruction in the English language class. Generally, what we focus is three components, three pillars are very essential to be a successful teacher. One, content knowledge, command over content knowledge. Second, pedagogy, that, that is methodology. And third one, technology. Not only this, new approach in the United States emerged without understanding socio-emotional aspect of a child, we educate the child, but not, a, not make a child a perfect human being. To make a perfect human being, we should understand the socio-emotional aspect of a child. Lots of the incidents happen. Suicidal case, depression, and lots of the, you know, uh, you know uh, disruptive behaviors. It is because we do we teach without understanding the interest of a, of a children, without understanding the social, emotional, cultural background of the children. So the, the prime goal of this program was to train us, to empower us some, some sort of information relating to uh, social and emotional learning instruction in English language classroom. So today it's not possible to deliver all the things. Maybe we will have another session 
uh, or another view we manage to share all of the things. I promise to share what, what I learned there. So, uh, training and workshop, we conducted various training and workshops on social and emotional learning. We visited American universities, education and research labs, had meetings on various issues on higher education, see the current research findings, the way of integrating research in classroom teaching and teachers' well-being. Visited American public schools, observed their classroom, shared the best teaching practices and interaction with the teachers and their teachers. Participate culture, we participate various cultural actions programs. Ah uh, yes, this is Chicago here, somewhere else. This is the United States and Chicago is here, a beautiful city uh, situated at the bank of Michigan. This is Lake Michigan and it is one of the, uh, the third largest and densely populated city of the United States. So, and it is in Illinois state, our constituent state of the United States of America, stretches 385 miles from the Wisconsin border in the north to Cario in the south. The capital is Springfield. The capital is small town. Chicago is big city. <coughs> and Chicago is the most popular city in the U.S., state of Illinois, and in the Midwestern United States, with a population of uh, two, you know, 20, it's, it's, uh, 27 lakhs 46,388 uh, 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 according to the census report of 2020 and third most popular city in the United States after New York City and Los Angeles. Chicago is an international hub for finance, culture, commerce, industry, education, technology, telecommunication and transportation. So this is the great uh, view of Chicago City. Lake and Lake Michigan, and this is the uh, Chicago, uh, yes, river there. And so, yes, so in 1871, there was a great fire in Chicago, and lots of the most of the infrastructure were uh, was destroyed by the fire. But after that, Chicago revived. Growth very quickly, and now it is it is the third largest and most popular city in the United States. Yes. So what we learned? The focus was what the social emotional learning, and this is the cycle developed by uh, Castle. Castle is one of the research organizations uh, established in the United States. It, it offers lots of the research programs, research scholarship to the professionals uh, in the United States and throughout the world. So socio-emotional learning is the process of developing self-awareness, self-control and interpersonal skills that are vital for school, work and life success. People with strong social emotional skills are better able to cope with everyday challenges and benefit academically, professionally, and socially. The content we, we provide subject matter, content knowledge to our children. That doesn't work. That doesn't cope to 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 you know address to solve the challenges that occur in their life. So we need to make our children more resilient, more sustainable to face all sorts of challenges that may occur in the course of their life. So this focusing socio-emotional uh, learning strategy enables, empower the children, empower our learners to face lots of the obstacles that may face in their life. How do emotional impact learning? Uh, em emotions play a role in how and why students learn. Emotions are inherently linked to and influence cognitive skills such as attention, memory, executive functions, decision making, critical thinking, problem solving, and regulation, all of which play a key role in learning. Social and emotional learning is an integral part of education and human development. Social emotional learning is the process through which all young people and adults acquire and apply the knowledge, skill, goals, and that attitude to develop healthy identities. 
Many emotions and other personal and collective goals feel and so empathy for others. Establish and maintain supportive relationships and make responsible, responsible and caring decisions. And not only for the children. Yes, we, we being a teacher, we have to focus to the children. Many offices, many organizations in the United States, they request to castle and lots of training center to train their teachers as a, uh, staffs for social emotional learning. So it is not only for the children. It is equally important for all the professions having different professions so that they can control their emotion and, and you know, uh, you know, regulate themselves according to the speed of the time, challenges, or whatever the things come in front of them. This is one example. Social emotional learning activities for elementary school. Encouraging positive self-talk, self-reach skills, self-awareness, self-regulation. What are the what are the uh, good aspects of the thing? What are what is a child needed? So we should talk their skin first. Generally, what we do, you, you silly boy, you don't know, being unable to solve mathematical problem, what we grade them? Yes, silly. So the, the, the child who is not academically proficient can be perfect in, in uh, sports, can be perfect in singing, can be perfect a uh, dancer. That is his particular skill. So we should recognize the special skills of a child, not only the academic or not only mathematics, not only English or not only social studies. Uh, so we, we need to focus. Yes, you are good at sports. So it would be better if you are good at mathematics as well, English as well. So highlighting the learner's strength, we can in, like, uh, arouse interest to the uh, uh, to the to our subject, to the different subjects. Learning about strength, what are the <coughs> interests of the uh, students? Random acts of kindness, sales skills, skills, relationship skills, social awareness, different writing, a uh, story together morning questions, playing different games. These are actually lots of the activities that we can conduct in a classroom. So we have lots of the list uh, and some, some resources as well. We will, I will share in the next separate session. And this is, this is the cycle, this is a will developed by Castle regarding socio-emotional learning. And why is socio-emotional learning important or beneficial for students? Self can help students better understand and identify their emotions. It can help them develop empathy, increase self-control and manage stress. It also helps them build better relationships and interpersonal skills that will serve them in school and beyond, helping them success as adults. Self is all about helping students learn to cope and deal with their stress and worries. It creates a safe learning environment for kids because they get to talk about their emotions, thoughts and behaviors. They also get to learn coping skills to manage their mental wellness. So there is one lesson in a beard first year compulsory English. So um, regarding to education and focusing to um, Dewey, John Dewey, and Jack Russo, and many philosophers. Whole child learning. So the goal of education should be should to make a child a perfect human being, a whole human being. So only academically proficient, perfect children can't be the perfect human being in their life. That is the goal, and that is, this is somehow related to self, socio-emotional learning. Why is self important for teachers? Not only students, it is equally important for teachers. For example, self helps teachers manage stress and uh, burden. Uh, practicing self-awareness, one of the five uh, competencies of self, they are more in tune with their emotions and aware of the things that cause them stress. Knowing the triggers enables them to use coping strategies to reduce the risks of becoming overwhelmed. So these are just of the uh, synopsis of uh, socio-emotional learning. And we participate about uh, five, six sessions regarding the same issues in different universities and different training centers. And other things, 
we visited different universities. This is the University of Northwestern University. And one important aspect is there is one department, Department of Research on Indigenous Skills, Indigenous Knowledge. So, United States not only highlight the science and technology, now United States go back to the nature, go back to the that community, ethnic community who have uh, you know indigenous knowledge and who have indigenous skill. And yes, this uh, this is our team. We interact with the professors of Northwestern University Chicago on May one. 2024, it was the first day. Similarly, our basic team, we were the teachers from different uh, continents, four different continents. For example, uh, Nepal, um, and then uh, Mongolia, Vietnam, Iraq, Bran uh, uh, Bahrain, uh, then uh, you know, uh, Tajikistan, and then next one from uh, Congo, Cameroon, and Ukraine, right? so, uh, and Greenland, Maldiva, so these were the countries. And another group were there from the same country, including Sri Lanka, uh, in Detroit, Michigan. This is another university we visited, University of Illinois, the, the major university of Chicago. And we had conference, we had trainings, and we have some presentations. And um, we also get an opportunity to present our research findings briefly. Yes, this is uh, yes training provided by Castle. She's very expert, and she has written one book. She, she presented one book, and she gave authority to translate. Yes, if you can translate, you can translate this book and share the knowledge. So, so she has given the right, you know, a kind of uh, right to, to trans for the translation, yeah. Uh, yes, we, we participate in different culture programs. So the second picture, this is the little girls uh, from Indian origin. They presented a bhajan in a Hindi song. That was typical and different culture we, we participate and this is presented by different schools uh, in the museum, the uh, Chicago Central Cultural Center. And this is the museum and luckily this one, this is the section, it's a big section like this hall for Nepal section. Lots of ornaments, lots of god and goddesses about Nepal that is beautifully arranged, systematically arranged with some, some course here. So America has collected lots of the culture, lots of the information throughout the world. So the grand goal is to promote tourism because uh, Chicago city itself is a center for tourism. Yes, uh, she is the dean of St. Augustine University and College. And the college, St. Augustine University, it enroll students from different countries. Now, there are students from 21 different countries and no TOEFL, no IELTS is required to get admission. And they, they, they support, they facilitate the students in their mother tongue as well. For example, if there are 10 Nepali students or 5 Nepali students, they look for Nepali professor. For the Chinese students, they take the support of Chinese professor. So what they said is, language should not be the barrier for learning. Gradually the students develop English and they have a <coughs> second language acquisition course. But they, they need to have good knowledge, good understanding, good in, uh, relation uh, be, be, uh, between teachers and students because of language and it is obviously their first language. So children should, the students can learn better in the language which is more comfortable for them. That is their principle. And I got a chance to present my MPhil uh, research finding because my thesis was uh, about EMI, teachers experiences of teaching using EMI in community schools at primary level. And the finding was uh, uh, somehow related there. And another sort of presentation on online, students experience of learning online during COVID-19 because this university, this college offer online and physical both. In classroom, there were only seven or eight students, and most of these students were on the screen 
These students learn through online and the number of students increase when they introduce online learning because from remote area, from countryside, students can join. They save the travel cost or lots of other things. Uh, yes, these are the people. And yes, uh, this is about the training and so let me skip. Uh, this is the uh, Chicago State University we visited. And this is uh, St. High School, Chicago. These are the classrooms. Yes, Le totally different from us. No, no empty space on the wall. Well decorated. The classroom is like a library, more resourceful. Okay. And the teacher is mostly uh, students friendly. And the, uh, I know the, the average number of students is 20 in a classroom. They are arranged in a in a round table like a, you know separate tables one table for different students like we arrange in our access classroom. This is Aspen Aspen Elementary School and almost all the students are from black community there. And I asked a questions to the head teacher who was black. When I am majority of the students, most of the students are black here. What we expect is by America, we say white people's country. And she said, this is the state, or this is the village, or this is the place for the black community. And most of the children are from this community. They were African-American. Mm -hmm. And they also get equal opportunity, and the government has given uh, you know, more rights to black, including their snacks, you know, loans, totally 100% free, stationary support, lots of other things. Yes, this is the class in there. And after presentation, each students sit in a round table conference and they, they discuss. And the teacher was uh, teaching food technology. And they, uh, the, uh, the teacher tried to connect food with culture, different culture. For example, Momo to Nepali culture. Okay? Chowmin to Chinese culture, or Dalha to Nepali culture, or Chapati to Indian, uh, sorry, uh, Italian culture, sorry, Indian culture, like this. And uh, when, when we, we uh, visit the school, they, uh, in a notice board, they arrange the map of different, different uh, uh, teachers representing different countries. And Nepal, the map of Nepal is unique and different. And I got a chance to explain the map of Nepal. And I explain what does yeah, Chandra and Surya mean or something like this. And everyone uh, praised the map, it is because it is a unique map. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, this is culture. Uh, visiting Mexican art and culture <coughs> and murals. This is for tourist point of view. Alright, uh, this much. So, thank you so much. Thank you, Nelda. And thank you, Nelda Lonzin. Thank you. All of you. It is because of you, teachers, I got this opportunity. And this is not the end. This is the beginning. And other teachers can get opportunity, but two things. One, connect with Nelta. And because of Nelta, you, you have the access of different link or advertisement or something like this. Another is do some online courses. Some of the online courses are uh, sponsored by Relo, freely available. During the COVID time, I I was awarded with two courses, one from uh, Arizona State University, which is three month course for professional development, and another affected filters. So because of that online courses, and yes, you can be a strong candidate to be selected for this program. So thank you so much. I will share lots of the things, and uh, uh, thank you, Nelta Longjun, for for this opportunity as well. Thank you. So I'd like to welcome you all to my session on exploratory exploration. Exploration parts. So there are two parts. I will talk about exploratory or exploration part and uh, Dr. Novas Deepani will be talking uh, about the second part. Okay. 
So we are already late. It will be like uh, this is Gadi, where are they going? Turning the tree and putting the head. Okay, the session will be like that. Because we uh, plan to have intensive workshop, but we have already around two hours time. Yes, two hours. Time. So I was supposed to finish my part in this time. So I am Kamal Longsal, uh, you already know, President of Nesta Kandaki. And uh, I have attended uh, trainings uh, at different places and presented paper. Now we will be talking about exploratory action research. So at first, thank you. Thank you for joining us. So, have you done action research? Any one of you? Have you done action research or exploratory action research? No? Yes, sir. Generally, we do once in a year. Once in a once in a year we do action research. You do once in a year. Yes. Okay. For that performance of result form. Yes. Yeah. For forgetting do one max. You really do or try to find out from Google or somewhere. Copy. Copy paste. Sir. <laughs> yes. Copy. So that is what is happening in our case. The reality is that. So, yes. From now onwards, we will not copy and paste. Right. Okay, we will not make Rambadu. Shambadu. Shambadu. <laughs> so, then what is action research? Sir, in short, action research is to improve, not to prove. Action research is a research to improve. What, what will you improve through action research? It is, it is to improve. Generally, the problems that we face inside the classroom mm -hmm. to students. We improve, While teaching, uh, we improve our teaching. Teaching, yes. Okay. Our practice. We try to improve our teaching, improve student achievement yes. through every action research. Okay, any other? One action research is to prove, not to improve, not to prove. <coughs> action research, yes. Research done by teachers. Very good. Uh, research done by teachers. By teachers uh, to solve the problem faces in the class. To solve the problems, yes. challenges, difficulties that we face in the class. classroom. Yes. It's a research for action. Research, research, research for action. Research for action. Research for change. Yes. So another half of the population is there at the back. Any idea? Okay, anyways. So action research is a way of improving our, in our case, teaching. Okay, let's not talk about other things. So it is a way of improving teaching. It is to improve, not to prove. So we carry out action research to improve our practice, not to prove something. So there are other resources that they try to prove something. But we are not proving anything, just we do action research to improve our teaching. Yes. So, of course, carried out by teachers. So it is collaborative. So how action research is collaborative? Any idea? Because we take the help of uh, our head teacher, co teachers, colleagues, and other. I yes, mean, at least we, we go to communi community. At least community. We students. students. Okay. Mm -hmm. If we don't have students, in our case, we cannot carry out action research. So it is collaborative. Students will collaborate. And our colleagues, staff, head teachers, community, I mean, there are many to collaborate with us to do the research. So, 
Action it aims at changing, changing things. So action research is doing things differently. Remember, till yesterday we might have been <coughs> teaching in one way, and today we do action research. Yeah, today means maybe one month. Okay, and from tomorrow, from next month, we implement. Okay, what we implement? What we have found in action research, we implement and we do our teaching. We teach differently. Okay. So it, it will be different from what we did yesterday. <coughs> okay. So action research, actually action research has two phases. What are they? Exploration and action. So now I will be talking about exploration part. So we will discuss this. Then what is exploratory action research then? Now we talked about what action research is. Then what is exploratory action research? To explore something, to get something, to use. To explore something, to get something, to get some tools, about what? <laughs> about problems and issues. About problems and issues. So face we face by students. Pardon? Face by students. So we try to explore one issue, one problem. Okay, that we face. Yes. So to understand issues and improve practices. Remember, action results to improve practice, to improve our teaching, but exploratory action results to understand the issue and improve practice. So first we understand the issue, we try to understand our problem, and when we if when let's say after we fully understand our problem, then only we go for exhibitions. Okay, so trying to understand our problem, <coughs> our challenge, our issue is exploration. So first we understand our problem and if it is our problem, so exploration means, so let's say I need to find whether this is my problem or not. So I may think that this is my problem. But students may not think that this is a problem. Our colleagues may not think that this is our problem. So we need to test whether this is a real problem or not. And this is exploration. Understanding the situation. Understanding the problem. Whether this is my real, genuine problem or not. If the problem is genuine, we move ahead, we carry action results. If in exploration, if we find that this is not the genuine problem, then we don't carry out action results on this topic or some other issue. Yes. Now, during exploration phase, what do we do? We plan for expo. Okay, we plan for expo. We collect information to understand the issue. Okay, whether this problem is a real problem or not, we try to understand. And this consists of three phases: plan to explore, explore, and evaluate or analyze and evaluate. So, what are the three phases? Three phases of exploration part only, not business part. Plan to explore, analyze, explore, and analyze or evaluate the. So, what is the exploration part? 
have the bees to do this. So exploration is the first step to carry out exploratory exploration. Okay, here we identify the problem and we test whether this problem is our genuine problem or not. Okay, and then we gather information to find out if this is a genuine problem or not. And we ask question, we form exploration question that is what we are going to do now. Okay, we observe. So we collect data to test if this is a genuine problem or not. And we analyze data, we understand the context, we understand the problem. So if this is a my problem or not. We understand. And now, so action research is teacher research. There are two phases. First, exploratory, exploration part, and then action research. Okay. So this is how we move. Now this is what we are going to do. So exploration, plan to explore, <coughs> explore, analyze and reflect. And action part. Plan, act, observe, reflect. <coughs> so till now, what is our practice is, we start from plan. Yes, plan. Mm -hmm. Second plan. So when we think of doing action research, we select one problem, we never test it, and we plan, and act. we act. We Object. teach according to our plan, we observe the changes, and we reflect whether our problem is solved or not. So here, if we do this, we might be doing action research with our own real problem, okay, which is not genuine. So if we plan to explore, if we do something from explorator uh, exploration path, then we will do action research with our genuine problem, real problem. So now we are going to find out whether this is our real problem or not. Now, let's go to number one. So we are going to list problem. Before we list problem, what our problem looks like. So classroom problem there on which we are going to conduct exploratory exploration. So any challenge, any issue, any problem, or any context that you want to improve. Okay, any problem that you want to improve, that you want to change, that you want to understand, or that you want to investigate is our classroom <coughs> problem. So now we are going to list three problems. Okay, now our classroom problem. So our problem, the problem that you are going to list now should be specific, so narrow that you cannot narrow it down. Okay, then you have written. Okay, so relevant, that should be related to your teaching. That should be related, okay, to the context. That should address <coughs> students' need as well in the classroom. So that should improve teaching and learning. Observable. The problem. So you are going to write problem, okay, that can be seen or that can be measured. If we cannot measure, then we cannot conduct Manageable, feasible. If you can manage, select and move ahead. If you cannot manage, leave it, don't touch it. So, we will be swimming on the sea. <coughs> Actionable. So, if, if it brings practical change in your teaching, do it. Move ahead with it. And repeatable. 
So that can be absorbed repeatedly. Absorb and absorb, act, absorb, act, absorb. Okay, the cycle is repeated. Reflecting. Your own teaching practice should be reflected there in the problem. Now you list one problem. Okay, this is my problem like that. And that should reflect your teaching, your practice. Contextual, that should be related to the classroom, related to your teaching, related to student achievement or something like that. Student center, so your problem should focus on student outcome. And collaborative, we have already talked about collaboration. So now, please, individually, go to your classroom now, okay? So imagine the problems that you are facing, you have been facing in your class, and please write down any three problems that you have been facing in your classroom. Please, please. It is called critical thinking. Critical thinking. Something is left there. Okay. Uh, shall I begin now? Yes, sir. Ma'am, round one.